Hello, my name is Glenn Lewis, and I'm um, a tech support person here at AgriDry. Uh, I'm sure I've probably talked to many of you uh, in the past. Um, and uh, today we're going to talk about um, natural air drying and low temperature drying. And as a bonus, um, we're going to talk about conditioning, um, how to condition a grain also. So, um, let's get started. It all starts with airflow to condition grain the best. It's, to, it's You need to have at least one CFM of airflow throughout the bin. You need to have enough roof vents. Typically, the industry standard is one and a half square foot per fan horsepower. Um, depending on your roof vents, it, you, know, it, you know, your roof vents will cover so many square feet. Um, using an a uh, grain spreader that uh, spreads the fines and somewhat levels the bin um, is also great. Um, this will help prevent coring. Um, when you core the bin, it changes how the air flows through it. So um, on this picture, um, you know, airflow matters. Um, while this webinar does uh, pertain to drying, we do need to load the bin correctly the first time so that um, once our controller takes over, it, the, the air flows through it the best way it can. So a lot of times in picture one, um, that's how, how a bin is loaded. All the fines are in the middle um, and all the airflow goes up and around the fines because of how tightly packed they are. Uh, in picture two, you core the bin and you have this big old divot in the middle. Um, so the air will take the path, path of least resistance. So if there's less grain there, then most of your, your airflow will go through it. Um, and I mean, the airflow will still go through, through the other main part too, but there's gonna be more airflow through the middle. Uh, and then when you use a grain spreader that you like, um, you should have uniform airflow throughout the bin like uh, picture three. Uh, so what number does your bin uh, look like? Um, and if you need help with that, then your uh, equipment dealer can help you um, find a solution to that. Natural air drying, uh, the, the yellow parts is what's different between the different grain types. Um, the, the white part is uh, what, um, basically it stays the same no matter what your, um, you know what grain type you're dealing with. So, um, and the, the and then the corn and soybean um, uh, suggested settings are on each uh, door of the controller uh, that were made after 2010. So natural air drying. Um, so the current moisture sets the top of the window. Uh, typically, we don't like to set it um, higher than. In this example, this is corn. So we don't like to set it more than 18. At 18% um, EMC, uh, the humidity is about uh, uh, 80%. So if you go much more above that, you're really not drying uh, anything, even if you're at like 19 or 20%. Uh, if you're higher than 20%, then you can increase that a little bit, but I, I would still caution against it. Um, just because the, you're really not drying and you're basically wasting electricity. So then your target moisture is used um, in conjunction with uh, your EMC limit, and that's what helps determine the bottom range limit uh, for your fans to run. And in this example, uh, the, the line that goes above and beyond uh, the uh, top line there, that's the EMC and the one that stays in the above uh, above the blue one there, that's the CEMC. Um, so in this example, uh, you know, if they had the use CEMC value on, uh, the controller would continue to run during that entire time frame. If the CEMC value is off, then it would only be on when the green line dips below, um, you know, here, and then it would turn off again here. So, um, so, um, 
and then low temperature drying. Uh, it's uh, again, I've highlighted the ones that change um, uh, depending on which you, which setup you have. Uh, the corn and soybean is on um, each of the controller doors that were made after 2010. Uh, and then in this example, uh, so current moisture is not used. It just needs to be higher than than the um, you know about a point higher than the target you're going for. Um, so in this example, you can see how the fan, um, the EMC goes out of range here, and then it comes back into range here. Uh, but during that time, the heater kicks on to dehumidify the air just enough to keep the natural air drying process going. Uh, we only need the, the heaters to warm the air up um, by, you know, two to five uh, degrees and that normally is, is enough for the uh, controller to keep running. Um, and you can see how uh, every time it peaks, the heater comes on and, you know, lowers the CEMC value, and then it just kind of does that throughout until the natural air uh, about noon that day uh, could take over. And, um, and then the heaters aren't needed anymore during that time because the natural air is, is below the red line there. Uh, but then once it goes above, the heater kicks on and, and starts doing what it did um, that morning. So in this example, um, the, the fans were running um, basically 24 hours. Uh, typically, we see about 18 hours of fan runtime, um, you know, when you're using heaters. Uh, there are times of the day where it might get too dry um, and, and shut off, but in this example, it didn't ever get below the green line here, so the um, uh, so it never turned off. Um, also, you can all you can see that if you were running just um, EMC or natural air without heaters, you'd only have about um, um, about seven hours of runtime. So you can see how having a low temperature um, heater on your bins can help. Um, increase your fan runtime and uh, get get you to storage uh, a lot quicker. Uh, and then conditioning grain. Um, so uh, we don't recommend it for corn. You can do it, but you have to be really patient with corn. Um, and I'm not going to talk about that. If if you want to do it, call us and we'll, we'll have a discussion. Um, no problem. But anyways, and for this example, we're going to talk about soybean because that's the one that uh, seems like it happens on a lot. So, um, so in this example, um, you know, your current moisture is used as your bottom limit now uh, instead. Your current moisture, uh, your target moisture, I'm sorry, plus your EMC limit creates the top range limit. So it will only run between um, 12 and 15. Um, some some customers are confused uh, a lot of times by um, why why we choose 12. Uh, you know when their grain is like 10 or 9. Um, the reason would be because if it was 10 or if you put it at 10, which would be down here, um, it would be basically back in drying mode because as this line goes through. Uh, you know, the, the operating um, window, uh, you can see between the, on the drier side of your target moisture, um, it, it's only gonna run for about 15 minutes. It's gonna run long, much longer on the wetter side of your target moisture. And, uh, you know, we're, we're trying to condition your grain so that, um, uh, so it brings it up uh, a little bit naturally. Um, also, we don't wanna, you know, then, the next question normally is, is why do we why do we set a limit at 15? Why not 18 or 20? Um, the reason for this would be um, if you introduce too much um, of the um, you know the wetter side of the the target moisture window, um, you know the grain might not be able to absorb it, um, and condensation on grain is bad. 
So we kind of want to just do it slowly over over time. So um, the best the best way to make sure uh, while conditioning grain is take some baseline readings first. Uh, if you have a static pressure gauge, um, turn on your fans, let them, you know, let them get up to speed and take a baseline static pressure uh, reading. Um, also, get a grain moisture, a good moisture from the top and bottom so you can compare those um, during the process. Um, if you add more grain to the bin, um, then you'll need to get new baseline readings. Um, and then uh, run for 20 hours and check the bin. Um, I recommend you check, check the bin um, while moisturizing every 20 fan run hours. Uh, it's just a good practice to do. That way if, if something's going wrong, then you have time to correct it. Um, if the static pressure or grain moisture increases by a half point to a point, then move about a bushel to a grain out of the bin. Uh, this will create a void uh, in the grain mass and allow expanding um, soybeans or grain um, to move um, in place. And that goes back to airflow. Um, we need to make, make sure that we're having a good airflow. Every time that you take grain out of the bin, you need to get new baseline readings um, and then compare it to those new baseline readings. Um, if you don't do it, you know, it's, you'll probably be fine, but um, I'd rather do something and not need it than need it and not have it done. So, um, so we have a YouTube channel um, where you can find more uh, detailed explanations on natural air drying with heaters and natural air drying without heaters uh, for the fall time like we're in. If you're new to the bullseye controller, we do have a video about getting started with the bullseye controller. Um, you can always go to our website um, on the support page there or call us. Um, Jason and I are here to, to answer the phone um, um, for most of the day. Um, so I'm going to open up the phone lines and see if uh, you guys have any questions for me. I kind of did go through that uh, pretty quickly. So um, um, give me a minute here. All right, so now you're able to unmute yourself on your phone. You'll need to press star six to unmute yourself, and you can go ahead and ask your question. Okay, it doesn't seem like there's any questions uh, anyone has. If you do have a question and you, um, later on, uh, you can always give us a call uh, here at the office. Uh, our phone number is on every controller door um, on the bottom of the suggested controller setting sheet. And um, I'd just like to say thank you for joining us for the 15-minute uh, webinar. Uh, if you want to review this, um, it will be on YouTube or our website, probably both, um, by the end of the day. So, uh, again, my name is Glenn Lewis, and thank you for joining us. Goodbye.